What else did we have on the the little notes that you sent me? Well, we wanted to talk too about, and this goes into this builds off of what we said earlier about becoming your own person as opposed to the person your parents wanted you to be. And that is having what is deemed a stable career versus flourishing in your creative nature. Yeah, I have um, a pretty big opinion about that. Oh, you don't say. Yes. Um, yeah, so uh, obviously I'm a creative, I'm an artist, and as an Asian being an artist is not a career end goal for most Asians. It's always seen as, oh, that's a cute hobby. Yes, it's a it's a good hobby. But what but are you really gonna do with your like, life? How do you make? That's the always, always the question. Like, how do you make money with that? Mm-hmm. How are you gonna support yourself? Exactly. Like, how do you support your family? I'm like, I don't even have a family yet. <laughs> like, why am I have, worrying about that now? Like, like it's always like. I feel like as an Asian, I don't know, maybe other cultures too, but they're always thinking about the future, especially in the being financially stable. Which is under You think that's just an immigrant thing? Like, I think it is an immigrant thing. And, you know, other cultures have it as well, but it's very predominantly, it's very predominant in the immigrant culture because you have parents, especially if you're a first gen, you have parents who grew up in the third world country and didn't have the opportunities that we do here who were not financially stable. And I know my dad, when he was living in the Philippines, you know, they don't buy notebooks. They buy each piece of paper. True, true. I remember that because uh, my parents used to have a store and we sell those papers. Yeah. yeah. Like that's how hard it was living in a different country. And so they come here and they want their children to prosper. And in order to be successful and prosper, it's all about that dollar sign at the end of the day. Yeah, because every time I visit Philippines too, I can really see how lucky I am to be living in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like my... Even though, obviously, like, I'm not rich or anything. We're living but, the American dream. Yeah, I'm still living a lot better than most people in, like, third world countries. Well, I mean, it just goes to show you can do anything here. I mean, I came here after living in the Philippines for seven years in 2013. I didn't even have my high school records with me. I had nothing. No work experience. No high school records. I went to TMCC, took my AccuPlacer went to college, got financial aid, I got myself a job, and now I'm an accountant and I have a car, I live in a nice place, I have good friends, I can buy clothes, you know? Yeah. It's these little things that we don't appreciate that really, it just, you can make it, you can make it here. In the Philippines, you're competing for a cashier job at McDonald's with people who have business degrees. That's true, that's true. Like, it's a very tough world in the third world country. So, I mean, I get it when Asian families tell you, yeah, give up on your dancing or give up on your yeah, singing. Yeah, because I think I, I totally get where they're coming from because when you're coming from a place where there's not a lot of opportunity, there's not a lot of money, like you're on that... Um, uh, Damn it. They're worried for you. Yeah, and you're in that um, mindset that is the lack mindset, you know, like lack of everything. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe we are seen as privileged, like we can venture into yeah, yeah. creative areas because there's opportunity here. So it's a give and take. I mean, I understand our parents' point of view, but at the same time, I'm like, mom. You're the one who put me into singing and dance lessons at the age of four and made me cry every weekend because I needed to practice so I could perform in front of all of your friends. Do you remember that? Because I yeah. remember that. Because I think um, as, I don't know, maybe an immigrant, um, being financially stable is more important than being happy. And I, I think feel like... Right. 
most immigrants look at it that way. It's like, oh, you need to be financially stable to be happy. But if you think about it, a lot of people that are working, whatever job they're working at, like they hate Sunday night, like regretting like, oh man, I got to go to work tomorrow. Like this sucks. Like actually, like it's funny because I had, I had a dinner with some uh, friends um, Sunday night. And like, that was like, those were the words that are coming out of their mouth. A lot of them too. Like we were in a, a big table and then, you know, we're like, we're having a good time talking and then we're like, it's time to leave. And then they were like, oh yeah, it's time to go. Cause I got to work tomorrow. Like this sucks. And I was like, and I'm sitting there. I'm like, damn, I'm lucky. Even though, yeah, I'm not making a lot of money, but I'm like, fuck. Like I, I'm lucky that I don't have to hate Monday mornings. Mm-hmm. Well, even going back a step further, besides just working, besides being financially stable, I mean, it starts from when we're younger. Because going to school in Asia, your mental well-being, your happiness, it wasn't important. What was important was being successful. That is true. How I was telling um, Guia Jarek earlier that my freshman year of high school in the Philippines was on par, if not harder, than my senior year of college here in the United States. They pushed us so hard when we were in the Philippines. I would get three hours of sleep a night as a 14-year-old trying to finish all of our school works. We were having oral defenses and theses. Theses? Theses? I was defending my thesis when I was <laughs> when I was a freshman in, in high school. Like It was crazy. And that was the focus because I think the idea is work hard now so you can enjoy later. Yeah, that's a, that's definitely a mindset for a lot of uh, immigrants. It's just make money now so you can retire. But why can't you just enjoy the rest of, let's say, oh, work for 40 years. Work really hard so you can live the next 20 years after that. Or why can't you just live? When you're then, old and you can't do yeah, anything when anymore. when you're like at 60 when you can't do anything. And like, you know. Well, that's really interesting because remember I was telling you that. So my degree is actually in elementary education. I am a K through 8 elementary school teacher. And when I had decided to stop teaching because because our our, our county is not very kind to its teachers. <laughs> when I decided to quit teaching, everybody had told me. Just stick it, just just stick with it, bear through it. The benefits are really good. You'll have a really good retirement. And I said the same thing. Why suffer for the next 40 years so that I can be happy later? Why can't I be happy now? Yeah, Why can't exactly. I find something that's going to make me happy now? And don't get me wrong, I'm not doing anything super fun like you, like photography. I'm doing accounting. But I love it so much more than what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I think... Like, it doesn't really matter. Like, let's say you have, a, like, a job, like, as a nurse or whatever. Um, if you love what you're doing and you're happy, go ahead and do that. But if you're not, if you're always dreading waking up every single day and thinking to yourself, like, fuck, I'm doing this shit again. Time do to make a change. Else. Yeah, do something else. Time um, to make a change. 